Okay, I'm just sitting here. Get rid of that camera. I'm just sitting here trying out some new fluxes and uh, and alloys. And in a video I did about ultrasonic cleaning, I said that I would do an example on ultrasonic cleaning to show how well this cheap ultrasonic cleaner works. So um, I'm sitting here on a test board just to see. Let's see how to turn on this other camera. Just to see how these other fluxes and stuff works. Um, other fluxes and stuff work. I really can speak English. I'm doing this to demonstrate the ultrasonic cleaner because after you use flux on a board, it looks like complete, total garbage. Um, I'm going to switch cameras and put on this junky little microscope camera and maybe you can see it. So here is the garbage that I've left behind on this board. If you try to clean this up with a Q-tip, it is going to be nasty. Fuzz everywhere and stringy and that kind of crap. So I'm going to turn that camera off so I don't have a big block over my head, although it is kind of fitting sometimes. And I'm going to spin around to the ultrasonic. So once again, this board and that flux is just nasty. So. I typically run about 30 seconds. Now this is the same water that I had and that, that I put in here when I did that video. And I'll be changing it first thing in the morning when I come back to work. But for right now, I got some slop to clean up and I'm gonna mix it into here since I'm changing it tomorrow anyway. So I'm gonna run it about 30 seconds on that spot. At 50 degrees C. This here in front is my alcohol bath. Um, after ultrasonic cleaning, I use uh, alcohol to displace the water that's left behind on the board. And then I cook the board above boiling temperature to get rid of any water that's been left over. So we're coming up on 30 seconds. All right, there's our 30 seconds, actually 35 seconds, whatever. I'll use compressed air to spray my ultrasonic cleaning solution off the board. A little bit anyways, not, I'm not too picky. And then I'm gonna submerge that in alcohol to displace any of the water that was left behind by the cleaner itself. Because you don't wanna hand back a water damaged board when it came in for a connector replacement. They plug it in and a week later they're like, hey, you did a connector on my phone and now it's doing this from the water damage because you left water under one of the chips, so don't do that. All right, now let's see what it looks like now. 30 seconds in the ultrasonic cleaner. This board was covered and up here at the top was just covered in garbage. Flux looks like trash when you leave it behind on the board. Plus it's corrosive and um, it'll cause, it can cause problems later on even if it says no clean. So here's after 30 seconds. This is the same connector. Now I didn't focus too well on doing a good job soldering. This was really just to play with the flux. And man, I miss my original chemicals because this don't look good at all. I, I just, I don't like this job. But anyway, as you can see, the ultrasonic cleaner did a very good job getting all that crap off the board. That's the difference the cleaner made. It went from being covered in gum, covered in nasty gummy funk, to actually being spotless. That camera don't pick it up with a crap. So maybe this one will. Anyway, love my ultrasonic cleaner. It is a cheap one. It does a lot better job cleaning off um, chemicals and stuff from doing rework than it does cleaning up water damage. But um, you know, who really needs water damage to come out perfect anyways? It does a real good job on that. Any but Anyways, there's my demo on ultrasonic cleaning. Crappy demo. I'll probably upload it anyways. Thanks for watching, everybody. Judging by the statistics on these videos, I highly doubt you made it this far, but I'm going to upload this crap anyways.